they're British and if I can say so, so if I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, we'll be reacting to Let's Talk About Your Religion Then. Douglas Murray, silence Muslim politician with facts. Guys, let's get straight into this. Douglas Murray is at it again. In the iconic interview on BBC, he debates a Muslim about policies around how returning jihadists who have committed crimes overseas should be treated by the government and the broader impact of the Islamic religion in Western culture. Douglas Murray argued that the traditional route of prosecution faces significant obstacles, primarily due to the difficulty in gathering concrete evidence against individuals who have committed crimes overseas. As a result, he advocated for a multifaceted strategy to address this issue. He also addressed the elephant in the room, the influence of religion in shaping the views of people who become jihadists. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Watch. Miriam, why do you say that it's a, a racial, there's a racial aspect to taking away somebody's citizenship if they're suspected to be an Islamic extremist? Because where are you supposedly sending them back to? Let's take the most recent case of a uh, young man who is half, um, who's got, who's of Vietnamese origin, but who's a British citizen. This is the one We're going now? through the Supreme Court. The Absolutely, appeal. he's mm -hmm. going through the Supreme Court at the moment. Uh, Britain wants to take away his citizenship. Uh, Viet Vietnam says he's got nothing to do with us. He's not a Vietnamese citizen as far as they're concerned. The only reason that we can consider taking away his citizenship is because we do not regard him no. as fully British. No, and if that I, is if a racialized concern. If I could just, if I could just correct that. If I could, really ju could just correct <laughs> that. Correct me, the problem about, uh, about uh, what Miriam's just said, among other things, is you can do the experiment, thought experiment another way. Let's say um, a, a pseudo state was set up in another country in the world. It's not and a state. It, uh, I, I know it's not a state. You know it's not a state. They think they're a state. They call themselves a state. And a lot of people who burn their passports or go over to fight for them, believe they are a state. Let's pretend another pseudo-state was set up from any other religious or other kind of background. If people from Britain were going to that state of any background or any origin, and they were cutting off people's heads and raping women and children, and Whoa. so on, I think this country would take a rather tough stance about it. And I think, among other things, one of the things we would look at was withdrawal of passports, among other things. If you say you are signed up to this uh, appalling state, Mi then maybe we take you at your word. Miriam's case is there is a racial element. Oh, but there should not this. ever no, be. No, and you I, 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 if I but think I think so. something Miriam said that uh, we really must come back on is that somebody is not considered fully British. Absolutely. You are either British or you're not. Well, then you can't off. withdraw somebody's and, citizenship. And They're it, British and citizens, if I can so say we so. have to deal with If I can say so, race. not only has it not well. got anything to do with race, but the bit that Miriam has not mentioned, which it has a very great deal to do with, is religion. This has a great deal to do with religion, and we have what not does? so far what, what discussed does? the religious aspect of this, because Islamic State calls itself Islamic State for a reason. They follow certain principles, misguided in your opinion, misguided in my opinion, but certain principles that they say they derive from Islam. All right, let Any discussion that. of this has to take them at their let word Mary to that. some extent. Well, I mean, I, I think it's very interesting that we would sort of try and essentialize Islamic State. They're very much like any cult or, uh, if you like, I, I, I think you can, you can look, you like look at their origin. If you, if you compare them to any sort of cult Shit, or gang, of there are usually uh, some similarities with the broader concept from which they're, they're derived. So you get cults that are derived from Christianity. Sure. Very similarly, you would say that Daesh or Islamic State is derived from um, Islam, Islam in some way. Yeah. Uh, but I think the problem is to take things at face value yeah, and to certainly to corroborate their narrative by no, accepting their view that I'm it is a state and that Miriam, they have I'm the legitimacy to call out. themselves Islamic. It, it, uh, is problematic. The, the WACO group in Waco uh, some years ago, everyone was interested in the religious claims they were making when they decided to become this millenarium crazy cult. I, uh, can, if can I, I just, can just finish, yeah. this, is a, this is a crucial thing we cannot avoid. I know it's uncomfortable, I know we want to keep you know, avoiding it, but the religious sure. aspect, which Miriam didn't want to talk about, is no, an a vital I, I part was, of this discussion. If I and it's reliant upon Mus Muslims right. of all kinds to if, take if that I thought on it was vital, and Douglas, tackle it. I absolutely would bring it back. But I think what's important is when you look at, for example, these rehabilitation programs, because that's what we're talking about here, is how to deal most effectively with the threat, is that we are talking about using methods that have been shown to be effective in other contexts and with other groups. Yeah, and and, and those are, can I, just, can I just finish, they are, they are methods that have been used in criminology and criminal 
Islamic studies oh. for decades, and they've got nothing to do with Islam. They just happen no. to okay. be effective. We're going, we're going but to have to ISIS let you does have this. a lot to do with Islam. We're so. going to have to Douglas Murray's stance on addressing the complexities of jihadists returning to the UK emphasizes a crucial aspect often overlooked: the influence of Islamic religion on extremism. Murray points out that even if jihadists misinterpret Islam, the religion's perceived influence on their actions cannot be ignored. Douglas Murray has been vocal about the challenges of integrating Islamic beliefs within Western societies, particularly concerning the radical interpretations that lead to jihadist ideologies. He, alongside other commentators like Sam Harris and Ayan Hirsi Ali, points out that while the majority of Muslims live peacefully, there's a non-negligible fraction whose interpretation of Islam poses a security threat. Harris and Hirsi Ali emphasized the need for a candid conversation about the elements within Islamic doctrine that jihadists exploit to justify violence. Murray's argument is that ignoring the ideological roots of jihadism under the guise of cultural sensitivity not only hinders the fight against extremism, but also fails to protect the values of liberal democracy. I totally agree with Douglas Murray on this one. In a society that prizes free speech, addressing the root causes of ideological extremism is essential especially when these ideologies stem from religious interpretations that clash with democratic values. Simply enacting policies without engaging with the underlying beliefs can be ineffectual. It's important to foster open dialogues about religion, where constructive criticism is distinguished from phobia or hate speech. We should be able to talk about the influence of Islam on certain people without being labeled as Islamophobic. This is what free speech is all about. Guys, let's talk about free speech. Like, I believe that you really can talk about religion without you being a fair Islam. Like, let's be honest, like, ISIS as a terrorist group. And to be honest, a lot of Islam be like, they are not Muslims. Like, a lot of Muslims say, those people are fighting a whole different thing. But like, if I'm being honest, they pray the same way you do and pray after killing someone and still give praise to God understand there are some cults that are brought up from Christianity like there are some movies I've watched that some cults after they kill someone they still pray to God and stuff like that but like let's grab that but if you notice one thing about Muslims is that anytime they attack like they only drag Christians to it but when you when he said yeah Muslim cults she were well, like there's also Christian cults like I really don't like the fact that Muslims let's say most Muslims cannot like defend their religion without dragging Christianity and it's actually I found on it it's disgusting if you are asked a question like focus on your religion don't drag another person's religion to it like more like they cannot back what they say without dragging Christianity more like Christianity is like their validator or something like that back to this if you say an extremist if you are a Muslim extremist like I believe that they should be locked in jail because you believe in that you can kill someone is just wow. Just because they insult your prophet or something like that, you, you have the right to kill them as wow. And to be honest, like I, I honestly believe that if you think like that, like stay where those things are permitted, not you going to a country that allow free speech and you want to practice that kind of law. But I tell you think about this, you like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.